The new Ford F-150 has been plagued by delays. I've got some information on that. It's not looking that great. I've also got some information on the F-150 full electric. There seems to be some very interesting changes happening with that truck to the powertrain. Also, I've got some news on the Jeep Wrangler 4xe, but first, let's talk about the Bronco. Over at carbuzz.com, they're reporting that some potential owners, some people who have reservations, have put their money down, and they're getting all kinds of shenanigans from dealers. Now, that's a little bit upsetting, I think. Ford is actually cracking down on some shenanigans with the Mustang Mach-E. Some dealers have been trying to do additional markup on the Mach-E, and Ford has shut that down. But with respect to the Wrangler, here's what's going on with at least this one customer. So this customer ordered a first edition, of which is a fairly limited number. I think Ford said, first they said 3,500, and then they increased it to 7,000. So this customer called into his Ford dealer to get an explanation of when he might be able to expect his first edition. And the dealer told him it was going to be a 2022 model, and the customer wasn't too happy about that. So Ford has a something called Priority Code 99 for the Bronco, which means you get to hold off your build without losing your place in line. And so the customer wanted to do that. Then the dealer said, well, you're not going to get your Bronco until 2023. Sounds like some kind of BS strong arm tactics. So Ford has actually confirmed that if you ordered a first edition, it's going to be a 2021 model. And they've also said that since some people have canceled their orders and some people have backed out, that they might not build all 7,000, which is good because that's going to keep some level of exclusivity for the first edition owner. So that's, that's a good thing. I think if you ordered a first edition, if you got in first in line, those first editions were sold out like within the first day. It's good to have some exclusivity. I think that's gonna be important for the brand and for those people that place their orders early. Ford has also said, if you change your order, you're not going to lose your place in line. So get your information from Ford, not from your dealer, because some dealers really don't know what's up. Now this is from a dealer. These guys seem to be on the up and up. It's Granger Ford. This is over at Bronco 6G. And they say they are getting uh, a couple of mannequins into their showroom, which are basically display models. And uh, they say that they should get produced before retail ones. They estimate the order to be built 517 and another in 531. And they think it's gonna take four weeks for them to show up. So. Earlier, I reported that Ford is gonna start building the Bronco on March 31st. I haven't been able to get any update if that is still, Ford hasn't confirmed it, but I haven't been able to get any update from independent sources if that is still the case. But it looks like people are gonna start getting their Broncos this summer. A couple days ago, Sabina Schmitz passed away from cancer. If you don't know who she is, she's a legend. She's considered the queen of the Nürburgring. She is the first woman to win the 24 hours of the Nürburgring and sadly she passed away at 51. There is a petition to name a corner at the Nürburgring after her. I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to do that. Um, sad news but uh, definitely go sign the petition if you are a fan of racing, if you're a fan of the Nürburgring and Sabina Schmitz. There's an all new F-150 coming down the pipeline and it's going to be fully electric. Ford has been teasing this for a couple of years, going back to 2019, I think. And as you probably know, there's a company called Rivian, and they have an electric truck that they are making on their own. Ford has an investment in Rivian, about 500 million, a very well-funded company, and so they are producing uh, EVs. Now, initially, they had a partnership with Ford, and it looks like they were gonna develop a vehicle together with Ford and I'm going to speculate now that the pickup truck, the F-150, was going to be developed in conjunction with Rivian. And here's why. The Rivian pickup truck has an independent rear suspension. And this is from an early Ford video. You can see what looks to be an independent rear suspension here. But let me show you a different photograph. So looking here at this photograph from Motor One, this is a couple months ago. You can see clearly there is a rear independent suspension here. You've got the two lower control arms. It's attached to something that doesn't quite look like a differential, some sort of mounting unit. And I know you're looking at this thing and saying, well, hang on, it's got an exhaust pipe here. But if you look over at the side and on another shot, you can see clearly there are some pretty big battery packs underneath it. So this is 
from a couple months ago, what we're seeing at motor one, definitely independent rear suspension. The Rivian definitely has an independent rear suspension. But now over at TFL Truck, another prototype has been spotted, and this time we can see the rear suspension looks completely different. Here we can see what looks to be an electric motor, and this is a completely different setup in the rear. It seems to be some sort of replacement for an independent suspension, more like a solid axle. A couple weeks ago, I was in a presentation from a company called Magna International. Magna is actually a very large producer of vehicles and vehicle components globally. They sub out to a lot of different manufacturers. For example, uh, the Toyota Supra is built at the Magna International plant in Austria and they built a whole different range of vehicles. And in this presentation, they said they are releasing something called the... So the E-Beam is a replacement technology that is essentially designed to drop into an existing pickup truck uh, and replace the beam axle, the solid axle, use existing suspension, use existing brakes, one would presume they can manufacture it so they can, manufacturers can use existing mount points for these things as well. There's a couple different ways you can go if you are developing an EV vehicle. You can be like Tesla, you can basically develop all of your own parts and components and you can verticalize it or you can outsource. Uh, companies like Fisker is doing that, for example, where they're going to use parts from Magna. So Magna sees a big opportunity. They want to make it easy for manufacturers to, to do this. And they say, I'm reading from their website here, it's a bold endeavor to electrify pickup trucks whose owners are demanding the towing and hauling capabilities they're used to. And we've accomplished it with our e-beam technology. This is according to the president. We know axles are core components of a truck's strength, and we're excited to have developed the first significant improvements to the solid beam axle in over 100 years. So they're saying that they're revolutionizing the rear axle on a pickup truck. And it's kind of hyperbole, but to some degree it's true because we are undergoing a revolution right now in the way our vehicles are going to be powered. So this comes with a couple different configurations. One is 120 kilowatts. The other is a 250 kilowatt motor. And if you're a manufacturer, you can choose from a single motor, a dual motor with two speeds, or a, a twin motor with uh, torque vectoring. So the F-150 EV has been delayed slightly, and we're going to talk about the, the regular Ford F-150, the delays with that too, in just a second. So the F-150 EV looks like it's going to be available in 2022. Ford is expecting, this is from Ford, an introduction in the first quarter of 2022, and we should get production uh, in the second quarter deliveries in mid-2022. So it's going to be built at the uh, Rogue Complex in Dearborn, Michigan, so it's going to be American built. There's a couple other EVs coming to market pretty much in the same time frame as well. We've got Rivian, which should have deliveries this year of just a very limited number of their R1T pickup truck and their R1S pickup truck, but we're expecting to have more significant production of the Rivian also in 2022. So it's hard to say who's going to be out of the gate first. Looks like Rivian is going to have a couple this year, but for the mainline production, it's kind of anyone's guess. It's a race to the finish for these EV trucks right now. There's a couple of them that are coming out. It's going to be pretty interesting. There's part shortages affecting the entire industry, and it really has to do with the chips that go into vehicles. And chips are obviously used in just about every non-mechanical component of a vehicle nowadays, from sensors and modules and all kinds of electronics. And so this shortage is affecting all kinds of manufacturers from North America and Europe and everywhere. So Ford is unfortunately not immune to this and it is affecting the F-150 pickup truck. And it's sort of on hold, let me explain. So what's happening is that Ford is going to go ahead and build these trucks, but then they're gonna build them without the module and they're gonna hold them for a number of weeks. We don't exactly know how long it is. Once they've got the module, then they're gonna ship them off to the dealers. And Ford spokesman Kelly Felker said that the modules needed for the affected vehicles are tied to basic vehicle functions, such as windshield wiper motors and infotainment features. The same kind of issue is affecting General Motors as well. And some of their pickup trucks, they are producing them without the fuel management modules, which is gonna have an impact on 
fuel economy, but it seems like those pickup trucks are still gonna hit the dealers. I just had the 2021 Dodge Charger Hellcat Red Eye for a week. I'm doing a full review on it, I'm editing it now. If you wanna see that, definitely go ahead and subscribe. It is one insane vehicle, and I can tell you that the engineers at SRT are amazing at their job. This is an incredible vehicle. You don't wanna miss this. Last year, Jeep announced the Wrangler 4xe. So this is their first electric Jeep. It's not fully electric. It is a plug-in hybrid. PHEV is kind of the terminology that people use. So it starts at about $48,000, $50,000. And how a plug-in hybrid works is when you're at home, you can plug it in in the evening, it charges up overnight, and you can go a certain distance on battery power alone. There's also some other advantages. We'll talk about that in a second too. Well, let's talk about it right now. One of them is 470 pound-feet of instant torque. So they are combining the electric motor with the two liter gas engine and they're getting a huge amount of torque out of this thing. It produces a combined 375 horsepower. Second only to the Eco Diesel, which I did a review on recently. You can check it out over wherever the link is over here somewhere. Eco Diesel is really good and this is gonna be something just a little bit different. So how far is this supposed to go on plug-in power alone? The battery pack is 17 kilowatt hours. It's not that big. And Jeep was estimating it's gonna go 25 miles on plug-in power alone. Looks like the EPA finally got a hold of one to test and it only does 21. Now, I don't know how big a difference it is. People are making a big deal of it online. It is four miles and percentage wise, it's you know close to 20%, something like that. But in the real world, mm, I don't know if it's that big a deal. Now what's interesting is that obviously the Wrangler was never really conceived with uh, hybridization in mind. For example, I recently had the RAV4 Prime, which is a plug-in hybrid. It has an 18 kilowatt, 18.1 kilowatt hour battery pack. I was able to go 40 miles on EV power alone. Obviously it's a lot more efficient drivetrain. You've got, you don't have all wheel drive. Well you do, but you don't have these big axles and these big transfer cases and all that kind of stuff and these big wheels. So a bit of a difference there. So so I will hopefully, hopefully get a, a four by E as soon as they're available for press. That'll be really exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. My name is Eric. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up, and I will see you soon.